There's good news and bad news for fans of Young Justice. The long-awaited revival of the series is still in the works, set for a 2018 release, but the new season won't be premiering on Cartoon Network or Netflix as one might presume. This week, Warner Bros. announced that Young Justice Outsiders will be airing exclusively on a yet-to-be-named digital streaming service for DC-branded properties. It seems that Warner Bros. is taking a page out of CBS's book by reviving a beloved TV show to draw people into a new streaming platform. Hopefully, unlike Star Trek Discovery, Young Justice Outsiders won't be plagued by the same series of delays. In video game news, the Nintendo Switch may be the new hot system, selling a record-breaking 2.7 million units in March, but the hybrid portable hasn't completely taken over the 3DS spot in the handheld realm. This week, Nintendo announced the new Nintendo 2DS XL, a new iteration of the new 3DS, minus the 3D part. Set for a July 28th release at $150 retail price, the new 2DS honestly looks pretty great. Unlike its predecessor, this system keeps the clamshell design and otherwise seems to have all the features and functionalities of its 3D counterpart. This is usually the part where I try to snarkily point out a flaw, but I honestly love everything about this thing. This is exactly what I would design if it were up to me. I'm not used to Nintendo not disappointing me in some way, but here we are. Finally, Heroes of the Storm got their big 2.0 relaunch this week, which changed absolutely nothing about the game except the way characters and skins are unlocked. Shifting to the Overwatch model, Heroes of the Storm now has loot boxes that can be earned or bought. These boxes can contain characters, skins, and other cosmetic items like sprays, banners, and emojis. Probably mostly sprays, banners, and emojis, actually. And loot boxes aren't the only thing coming over from Overwatch. Not only is Genji now live in the game, along with a new Hanamura map, but he isn't fighting alone. D.Va will follow Genji to the battlefield on May 2nd. And for maximum corporate synergy, the addition of the new Overwatch characters is being marked by a four-week event that encourages Overwatch players to migrate to Heroes of the Storm for a few rounds to unlock rewards in both games. This includes a second chance at the Ani Genji skin, along with a new Officer Diva skin. Unlocking everything will require a minimum of 20 games played with a friend between now and May 22nd. Hitting theaters this week, get ready to give Marvel some more of your money for... Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Everybody's favorite group of space misfits since at least 2014 are back for another round of colorful sci-fi adventures set to a 70s soundtrack. It's interesting that in the age of spoilerific trailers, the marketing for this movie has given away virtually nothing about the plot save what we already knew about Star-Lord's dad. There's a good lesson here. Over on television, the long-awaited Neil Gaiman series American Gods finally arrives on Stars, Featuring a star-studded cast, the series follows the hidden world of gods as the old gods of centuries past struggle to stay relevant in the modern world. And hitting PC this week, Knights of Galavanth is an interesting-looking Metroidvania-style game with permadeath that lets you switch between eight different characters at any time, each with their own stats and mechanics. And if that sounds like a difficult game, just wait until you get a load of Tumble Seed, otherwise known as the Dark Souls of Marble Rolls. Because these kind of games aren't hard enough already, they've got to throw in enemies and environmental hazards into the mix. And for this week's RPG Maker entry, Arcane Pre-Raise is the prequel to Arcane Raise and Arcane Re-Raise. This indie RPG has the lofty goal of redefining the meaning of the word game. Good luck with that. Of course, it might have some competition with The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, the third. Sporting some slightly higher production values, this is the third entry in the well-received JRPG franchise. Now, for something a bit more American, The Last Hours of Jack is a zombie beat-em-up with a neat art style that puts you in the role of an IT tech in the midst of the zombie apocalypse. Next up, Super Rude Bear Resurrection has two interesting things going for it. The first is that its main character is a bear wearing a pink cap. The second is that the game has a neat mechanic for the hardcore platformer genre. When you die, your corpse stays in the level after you respawn. You can interact with it using your own dead body as a makeshift platformer shield to help you get through the level. And finally, Prey is the latest FPS from Bethesda, rebooting the franchise to put you in the role of a shape-shifting alien-human hybrid with wacky guns bent on saving humanity by killing absolutely everything. Wrapping things up with this week's CG Bros video, Stormlight by David Fonte is a neat little animation that apparently reenacts a scene from a fantasy novel.
And finally, this week's awesome video comes from the Warp Zone, who dove into some political commentary this week, pondering other potential gigs for White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. Mufasa's foreign policy was absolute garbage. Scar inherited a bad situation, but he still managed to bring together the hyenas and lions for the first time in history. Now that sounds like progress to me. Thanos didn't destroy half the universe, okay? He minimized it out of necessity. Obama's universe had a million trillion suns. Thanos' has 66. It's much easier to understand and manage. That's it for this week, so what would it take to get you to play Heroes of the Storm? Give me your best answer in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, maybe pass this video around to your friends, and have a great week!